right? So that means that which numbers can possibly come up or what, what numbers would make up the sample space. I'm going to list on the side here. One, two, three, four, five, and six, right? Those are all the numbers in my sample space. Now, A is meant to be numbers smaller than 3. So, I'm going to list them again. Now, which numbers are smaller than 3 from the sample space now? 1 and 2. Smaller than 3, so it can't be 3 as well. Right. Then, B is numbers larger than 3. So, that is going to be 4 and... Five. Oh, and six. Sorry, yes, jeepers. Four, five, and six. Thank you. <laughs> I need a break already. It's day two. <laughs> okay, now guys, what we're going to do is instead of having these lists, we're going to now put all this information on the Venn diagram. All right. So what we need to do is please write on the outside of your box. Put an S there. That represents the sample space. You obviously don't have to write sample space every time. It's just for the note. So you're going to put an S on the outside and we are going to have a circle representing each event. All right. So event A is number smaller than three. Event B is numbers larger than three. Now, guys, in this case, my two circles are separate from each other. They're not touching. They're not overlapping because if we are looking at A and B, are there any numbers that are in common that appear in both of these in A and B? One and two, and then four, five, six. No, they don't have any of the same numbers. Okay, so we keep the two circles separate. Now I want you just on the side to write that first bullet, that first little star. If that happens, that they, they don't have any elements in common, we call those two events mutually exclusive. Right, that means that they can't occur at the same time. Guys, that basically means that when you're rolling this die, it's impossible to get an answer, one number, that is smaller than three and bigger than three. Does that make sense? Right? You can't get that. So we call those two events mutually exclusive. Okay, you don't have to write down the next point yet. We'll get to that still. All right, now what we're going to do is we are going to put all of these numbers on the Venn diagram in the, the kind of spaces that they belong. Is there any or are there any numbers from S that don't appear in A or B? Three, hey? Do we see that we have a three in our sample space, but three is not in A or B? So guys, that three is going to go in the block or the box, or whatever you want to call it, that represents the sample space but outside of the two circles. So you can put it anywhere outside the two circles. I normally put it in the bottom corner. It doesn't matter. You can put that three up there. You can put it there, wherever. Okay, as long as it's in your box, but not in the two circles. If there were multiple numbers that were in the sample space and not in A or B, we would put all those numbers in the gaps outside the circles. Okay. Which numbers must go in A? One and two. <laughs> guys are confusing me, please. All right, and which numbers must go in B? Four, five, and six. Have I now filled in all six numbers in my Venn diagram? Yes. yes. Now, guys, the fact that there is a number, let's focus, please, on the outside of these two circles means that the two events don't cover all of the, the possible outcomes, right? So, if you are rolling this die and if it lands on a three, it won't fit into either A or B. Okay, there's an outcome that's outside of the two circles. So, that is the second point. Some of you have already started writing that down. 
we say that those two events are not exhaustive because of that three that's outside of the circles. So all the possible outcomes of the sample space, so all the numbers from one to six, do not fall in these sets. There's one that doesn't fall in those two sets. So because of that, we say that they are not exhaustive. If all six numbers were in the two circles, we would say that the events are exhaustive. Okay, so it's either exhaustive or not exhaustive. Right, any questions so far? Yes. Wait until we get to an example and then you'll see. Okay, I want us to do another one. Again, a die is rolled. I was still busy drawing my box here. But now, what's happening? It's very noisy. There's like a lot of background sounds happening today. All right, so we have, that's a bit skew. That A is that we are coming up with even numbers. And then B will be all factors of six. Now you can already see on my picture that A and B overlap. What do we think that means? They're going to have an element or two, maybe three. We'll see when we list them. They are going to have some elements in common. All right, so there are going to be elements or an element that is even and a factor of six. Ross? Okay, I'm going to do the same thing as in the previous one. Again, I'm going to list the sample space. It's going to be the same again because we're working with a die. So from one to six. All right, we're going to list A, so all the even numbers. So we have 2 and 4 and 6. And then we're going to list B, which is all the factors of 6. So 1 is a factor of 6, right? Next up is 2 and then 3 and then 6. So now, guys, hopefully we can notice that 2 lies in both A and B, and then also 6. So these two sets have two elements in common. So now when we are filling in our Venn diagram, we're going to have to put the 2 and the 6 in this section where the two circles are overlapping. Okay, so 2 and 6. Are there any other numbers in A that we have not put in that section now? A had three numbers, right? We're still missing four. So the four must now go in the portion of A that doesn't overlap with B. <clears throat> and if we're looking at B, we are still missing two numbers there. So we already have two and six as a part of B, but we still need 1 and 3. Okay, so we must put 1 and 3 there. Yes. Yes, well done. So we're still missing 5, right? 5 is a part of our sample space, but we don't have 5 in either A or B, so you can just put 5 wherever you want, as long as it's in the box, outside of the circle. Oh, and what did I leave out? What's missing here? The S. Good. Make sure that you're putting that S there, please. All right. Let's go move on to a 
an example. We might only copy the first bit down. We'll see how it goes. Are there any questions at this point, guys? We are right. Okay. I just want to see it. Is everyone done. Oh, guys, let's just quickly chat about those terminology or those terms that we spoke about. Are these two events now mutually exclusive? No. no. Remember, two events are mutually exclusive if they can't happen at the same time. But it is possible to roll the die and get a number that is even and a factor of six. Okay, whenever your two circles overlap, and when you have elements in that overlapping part, they are not mutually exclusive. Are they exhaustive? No, hey, because there is a number outside of the circles. Okay, exhaustive is only if all the numbers are in the circles only. Okay, example. Please copy that down. Customers at a supermarket were asked if they had bought bread, milk, or both. 150 were questioned, and the answers were, and then there are three values there, pieces of information. And the first question is to draw a Venn diagram to illustrate the information. Okay, guys, if we are looking at this question here, what I want us just to highlight, very important, is this piece of information. That 70 people bought bread and milk. The reason why this is very important is because this 70, or these 70 people rather, are included in the 125 up there. So it's saying here 125 bought milk. It doesn't say 125 bought milk only, right? It's saying here that 125 people bought milk. But then 70 of those people also bought bread, right? So these 70 people are included in that number of 125. And then the same thing happens with the 85. 85 people bought bread, but 70 of those people also bought milk so guys what you are going to do whenever you're filling in a venn diagram you need to fill in the and portion first the overlapping part you need to fill in first so on our venn diagram we have to fill in the 70 first right so i'm going to make a note here fill in first very important you have to fill that in first because now guys the 125 that bought milk that should be the whole milk circle all of those two parts must add up to 125 we can't have a 125 and then a 70 because then are we listening we can't have a don't copy this down because it's wrong you can't have 125 there and then 70 there because then how many people actually bought milk if those are the numbers 195 but they've told us that 125 bought milk. All right, so you have to fill in the 70 first. And then for this one, you're going to say 125 minus 70, which is what? 125 minus 70 is 55. Make a note. That is 125 minus 70. Very important. Always fill the middle part in first and then you are going to work your way out. All right, how many people bought bread? 85. There are already 70 people in the bread circle, guys. So how many are missing still? 15. So this whole B circle must add up to 85, right? So that must be 15. And I'm getting that by saying 85 minus 70. How many people were there all together? 150. Do these three numbers add up to 150? Let's check quickly. What's 55 plus 15? 70 plus 70. That's 140 only. So where are the other 10 people? 
Yes, they're outside the two circles. They didn't bought, didn't bought. They didn't buy bread, and they also didn't buy milk, right? So the other ten people must be there. So guys, you always have to check. Okay, you have to check whether your numbers in the circles add up to the one fifty. Okay, and if they don't, the missing part is there. So I'm going to write a little note here. This ten we got by saying one fifty minus these three numbers. 55 minus 70 minus 15. Okay. Something that is also useful, you don't have to do it, but you can if you want, is to put the total on the outside of the Venn diagram, just kind of as a reminder. So maybe when you are reading through the whole question, they're telling you 150 people were questioned, and then you just put that on the outside. But you don't have to do that. You don't get a mark for doing it. But guys, does that make sense? You start with the middle part and then you work your way out. Please, that's the most common mistake. All right, just quickly take a picture of that or write it down. You have three minutes. I want you to do those two questions for homework, please. Either take a picture of it or write it down in the three minutes that are left. Quickly, quickly. 